The research that we've been involved with here at Dartmouth uh, has focused on uh, several different fronts, one of which is the stem cell therapy, which has really developed over the past 10 years. And it's been shown that uh, taking stem cells and injecting them into a leg that's ischemic, ischemic means there's not much blood flow getting to the leg, that when these cells are injected into the area, since there's not much blood getting into the leg, there is not, the oxygen levels in the leg are low. And these cells sense that low oxygen level and then uh, change themselves into uh, cells that can then uh, either make new blood vessels or potentially heal the wound uh, that's on the leg. What we found was that in, in patients who receive the uh, stem cell therapy, that if you combine the risk of uh, wound worsening, death, or major amputation, that it was significantly better at uh, six months. So the patients who received the stem cells had a lower incidence of amputation, uh, wound worsening, or death when compared to the placebo-treated patients. And what was truly remarkable about it was that it was a relatively small number of patients, and yet we still saw clinically significant improvement in the stem cell-treated patients compared to the placebo. Now whether that holds up in a larger phase three trial, which is the final trial to get this approved by the FDA, is unclear. But the early results are quite promising. And it's compelling enough that there's no question that the uh, pivotal trial needs to be done as quickly as possible. So in patients who enroll in the trial, they will uh, first go through a pretty arduous screening process to make sure that they're candidates for the trial. Once that's completed, uh, we go through us looking at to make sure that the patient truly is no option. So we look at their medical record and their studies. Once that's done, the patient then returns and under uh, local anesthesia with a little bit of sedation to make them a little sleepy, we have them lie on their stomach and then we uh, make a small incision that's maybe an eighth of an inch in length in their uh, right hip. Uh, and it's in the, more in their uh, the back. And uh, we take a needle and then place it down onto the bone and then push the needle uh, through the uh, bone marrow, through the bone into the marrow. And we then aspirate about a quarter of a cup of bone marrow. And that whole thing takes about maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, once it's done, uh, we hold some pressure at the site for a few minutes and then the patient goes home maybe 30 minutes later, 40 minutes later depending on how much sedation they received. Uh, the bone marrow that we aspirate is then placed in a uh, refrigerated container and is then sent to the company where it then uh, is placed into their uh, bioreactor so that the appropriate cells can be grown up or made into a larger number over a two-week period. And then those cells are sent back to us to, to be injected into the patient's leg.